What up everybody? Back again here with our area unit. Today we're going to be solving area problems using the distributive property of multiplication. So let's uncover our objective. Our objective today, today I will be able to solve for the area of a rectangle by using the distributive property of multiplication. So here we have some math vocabulary just to make sure we're all on the same page when I say the word dimension. Our definition for dimension is the measurement of length in one direction. So if you've been with us throughout this playlist, you know what I'm talking about. If this is your first lesson and you are just hopping in, welcome aboard the Instructor Beats area unit. And so here we have a line. This is one dimensional because you can only measure the length in one direction, right? You could say the length is maybe four centimeters. Here we have a rectangle. We can measure the length in the width. We can now measure this in two directions, making it two dimensional. And then here we have a three-dimensional object, which is a cube or rectangular prism. And we can, it is three-dimensional because we can measure it with its length, its height, and its width or depth. So we can measure it in three different directions, making it three-dimensional. And then when I say the word decompose, what we're talking about today is to break it apart into smaller pieces. Let's take a look at how we can use these math vocabulary terms in our lesson today. But first we need to rewind all the way back to the distributive property of multiplication. So at some point in your life, you'd learned about the distributive property. So here we have an array, okay? And I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 groups of four, okay? And when I multiply that, that's going to give me the answer of 56. So that's the array that is shown here. The distributive property tells me that multiplication is repeated addition. So we can actually split this array into two different groups, find out the product of the two separate groups, and then add it together, and we can still get the same answer as 56. So you could break this apart in any way you wanted to, as long as the groups are equal, right? You could have made two groups of four and 12 groups of four. You can make three groups of four if you split it right here, right? And then have 11 groups of four. It doesn't matter. For the purpose of this question, I'm just gonna make it easy. I'm gonna split it right down the middle. And I'm gonna make seven groups of four and seven groups of four. So if I go ahead and split that apart, what the distributive property tells me is I can do seven groups of four and then add that to seven groups of four and I should still get the same answer as 56, right? So what the distributive property tells me is I can decompose 14 and do seven groups of four and then add that to break apart. If I decompose 14, if I took out seven, I have seven left and do seven groups of four. And when I solve that, my answer is still going to be 56, which it is. I have 28 here and 28 here. When I add that back together, I get an answer of 56. If you need help with this, we have an awesome Instructor Beats distributive property song that you can look up out here. So that's a distributive property. You learned that a long time ago when you learned about multiplication, right? You can split up factors, you can decompose them into two separate groups, right? Because multiplication really is just repeated addition. Well, because we know that area is just really in finding an array, we can do the same thing with area. So here we have the exact same array. Now again, when we do rectangles, instead of saying that we have columns, we say length and width, right? We use our dimensions. So here for this whole rectangle, I have a length of 14 units and my width is four units. So if I were to find the area of this, I would do area equals 14 groups of four. And I would say the area of this rectangle is 56 square units. Now, if I wanna use my distributive property knowledge to make this easier, to give it a different look, I can split my array or my rectangle into separate equal groups. Now, if I get rid of my purple circles, I now just have two parts of my original rectangle. So just like before now, if this is seven units and this is four units, and then I decompose my rectangle to different parts, right? So now I have seven units over here and four units here. I'll do four U, there you go. I can find the area of each of these and then add them together. And when I do that, my square units that cover this shape up are going to be 28 square units. And the area of this rectangle is also going to be 28 square units. And when you add that together, you're going to get an answer of 56 square 
units. Because finding the area of a rectangle is the same thing as doing just a multiplication equation using an array, we can use our properties of multiplication, such as the distributive property, when we solve for area. So now that we've made the connection between our distributive property with arrays and our distributive property with area, let's take a look at how they're going to ask you these questions. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Okay. It says the figure to the right represents a bathroom covered with white and blue tiles. Which expression could be used to find the area and square units of the entire wall? So if we label right now what we can see from this rectangle, we know that we have one, two, three, four, five, six units is going to be my width. And then down here, my length is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 units. But it's already split into three units, which leaves us with nine units right here. So instead of adding these together and doing six times 12 to find the area, we can use our distributive property find the area of the white tiles and the blue tiles and then add them together. So to do that, right, what we would have to do is do nine groups of six and then add that with three groups of six. And that would give me the same thing as if I, again, added my length and did 12 groups of six. So we can use either one of these multiplication equations to help us find the total area. Let's look at our answer choices over here and see which of these has a matching expression to the one that we wrote. So this one says three plus six. So we know it's not that one because we didn't do three plus six, we did three times six. Again, this one has addition, so we know that can't be it. This one says three times six, okay, we have that, plus nine times six, all right, so that's the exact same, but we just wanna double check. And this says three times three. So we know that cannot be the right answer. So if we want to find the total area, instead of just doing length times width, we broke apart the length, we decomposed it into two groups, and then we multiplied both of those groups times six. Again, we used our distributive property. So my answer would have to be C. Again, recognizing that area is just a multiplication equation. So we can use our properties of multiplication to help us solve these questions. Let's check out this last you try problem. Again, using your knowledge of the distributive property and area being a multiplication equation to help you solve it. So if you are ready, you can go ahead and push pause, try the you try problem by yourself and then push play and check how you did. If you aren't ready to do it by yourself, you can do it with me as another we do problem. Hopefully you just pushed pause and now you're checking it. The question says a rectangle shown part of the rectangle shaded, which of the following shows a way to find the total area of the shaded end on shaded parts. So again, I can't really write a statement here, but I can identify. I know it's a rectangle. I know I want to find the total area. And so I'm going to be using my distributive property knowledge. So if I label this, I know my width is three units. Okay, one, two, three. And I know my length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but I can see they decomposed my eight into six units for my blue and two units for my white. So to find this, I'm gonna have six groups of three, and then I'm going to add that to two groups of three, and I'm gonna use my distributive property knowledge to add those back together. So I can't pick A because A said six times three, and six times three again. So that's not the one I'm looking for. This one says six times three. Okay, so six groups of three plus two groups of three. So that one matches the equation I wrote. Here I have six plus three. I know I'm not doing addition. I'm doing groups of, so I'm doing multiplication. And here it looks very similar to B, but this one has multiplication and not addition. So you gotta make sure that you look at all the operations they're giving you. So your answer for this has to be B. What we want you to take away from this is when you're solving for area, you're really solving a repeated addition multiplication problem. So you can use the properties of multiplication to help you solve these questions. You can break it apart with the distributive property, you can flip your factors like the commutative property, and you can use all of those to help you come up with your answer. Thank you so much for checking us out today here at Instructed Beats. We hope that you will like and subscribe the video. We appreciate you spending your time with us. We know there's a lot of different math options, but we are thankful that you've come to hang out with us today and learn about area. Instructed Beats, out.